How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with new brewery time. But kind of familiar time, I guess you'd say, in the form of 5E Barone. I'm going to say Barone. I don't know why I want to say it that way, but that's what I'm going to say. So, you know, hate me if I'm saying it wrong, but cause I, I would imagine that like people up there in like French Canada would say Barone. You know what I mean? Even though that sounds Italian, whatever. I'm weird. This is their mixtape. New England style IPA. 6.5% alcohol by volume. Uh, four. 7.3 milliliter can. Uh, this was canned days ago. And this comes courtesy of the brewery, but also my buddy, Jacob. Um, my buddy, Jacob, longtime viewer of the channel, longtime friend of the channel. Uh, we drank in real life, hung out, the whole nine, shared beer mails, all that fun stuff. Open up a brewery. He sent me a box of the brewery's beers. I am beyond ecstatic. So anyway, let's dive into this sucker, see what she's got. This is where it gets a little dicey, though, because the dude's my boy, my real boy, you know? Not, you know, met in real life, shared hugs, all that kind of fun stuff, but I'm going to tell the truth about beer. That's what I do. I can't help. Uh, Label-wise, I'm overly impressed with the labels. Not for a well, stylistically, fantastic. I dig it. Minimal. Great. All that stuff. I'm um, using that kind of street font with a mixtape. I'm loving mixtape. I love a little stereo over there, all that stuff. But the lack of information on this can is staggering. I mean, new breweries want to talk. And I've said this in the unboxing. and they want to talk. They want to count. They want to say things. Here it just says the brewery name, name of the beer, style of beer, ABV, size of the can, barcode, health warning, done. I love it. I love it. Uh, that looks like really nice haze, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, why? Let's do that. We never actually talk about why. Why does that look like really nice haze to me? It's got this it's got this rich, sultry haziness to it, but it doesn't get that kind of that darker orange core to it. Sure, it gets a little bit darker in the center, but it has this softness. It has this almost, and I've talked about it, like it almost has like a dollop of cream in it. Um, I'm not calling it like a lactose beer, but I'm saying it has this kind of lightness to it. This lack of this sweetie kind of residual sugar thing and when i mean that when i say by that when you have these beers that tend to be like overly sweet residual sugar at the wazoo these beers that tend to have this kind of candied like sweetness they tend to be a bit darker that's just usually how they come off these beers these kind of softer hopefully softer kind of water nerdy kind of ipas tend to look in this direction the soft kind of white semi-opaque kind of edge gets a little bit kind of darker towards the edges look at the soft Beautiful head on it, tight comeback bubbles. Looks all the part of a really nice, well done hazy. Now, looks are looks. Doesn't mean it's gonna be perfect. Let's show you the nose. I mean, it's definitely citrus leaning, um, heavily citrus leaning. Orange, a nice heft of grapefruit, a little bit of pineapple going on in there. A green bittering, but that green bittering. It doesn't come off hot pellet. It's more like weed pollen, tomato stocky green. It starts to really merge a little bit with that kind of orange pithiness that you get from those kind of big citrus notes. It doesn't smell overly sweet, even though I think there's going to be enough sweetness there to get it by. I think it's going to come off as a drier kind of bittering beer. I don't hate that. Now, most people, when they see New England style IPA, they expect a little bit less bittering, a little bit more sweetness. That could be the case. But just knee jerk, I think I might get a decent amount of bitterness in I like that. I like that. Yeah. Oranges. Grapefruit. Pineapple. All the orange leads the way. You can talk me in all kind of a little bit of tropical fruit here, a little bit of stone fruit there, but it really is the orange that really takes the head. That nice green bittering that marries well with that kind of pithiness from the orange. Let's dive in. Cheers. It's delicious. That's what that is. Ooh, dodged a bullet on the first one. It's way sweeter than I thought it was going to be. It's not super sweet, but I thought, based off of that nose and the way it came off, even though that I was talking oranges, it was more kind of under ripen, kind of pithy, um, rindy, kind of orange, grapefruit, that kind of stuff. And the taste, you definitely get a sweetness in there. It's not overly sweet by any stretch of imagination, but you do get that bitterness that I was calling out and knows there that is very much appreciated because if it didn't come off straight bittering or straight, um, if it came off straight sweet and no bittering, even I think it would just be a little bit too sweet for me. 
even though that's not overly sweet. So like six and change, so it's not a big beer. Um, it has this nice pop of sweetness at the beginning. Really beautiful mouthfeel, really soft mouthfeel. Just stops what just stops short of that super water nerdy mouthfeel I'll get from like Equilibrium and those kind of breweries. We get that pop of sweetness up front, then you get hit with that kind of bittering. Um, that little bit of green weedy, pulling weedy kind of bittering with this orange grapefruit kind of pithiness. That sweetness from that uh, juiciness portion of the show starts to build back up, all wrapped around this nice soft kind of mouthfeel. I think it's fantastic, dude. I really do. And like I said, like, it's kind of one of those weird things when, you know, when, you know, friends send you beer as homebrew. That's one thing. But, you know, friends send you beer from the brewery they just opened it's a little bit different you know there's there's life life is on the line as far as you know mortgages and apartments and and, and rent and all those kind of things and, and you never want to poop on anything i mean i don't ever go into a beer review minus soul brewing slash separatist brewing i never go into any brewery wanting to poop on them but it is beyond my capability to be nice when you know it doesn't deserve it. Like, I know it sounds like kind of asshole thing, but one of my most fatal flaws is that I just have this kind of weird, creepy, moral, ethical core. Like, I'm the guy who can't, like, when I work from home, I fucking work from home. Like, I work. You know, I probably work more when I work from home because I don't want to be like, oh, I'm just wasting my time, stuff like that. Or, you know, like, things like that. Like, I'm honest to a fault at times. And it comes the same way with beer. So it's one of those things where, you know, if the beer wasn't, wasn't, wasn't tasty i'd have to say it's not tasty i just can't not do that um and uh this is not not tasty let's put it that way it's really good stuff man i'm like really really genuinely impressed what would i and i rarely do this but what would i put this in where would i put this as far as what breweries have i had beers from the where where i kind of put this beer for me is it Treehouse. Is it Trillium? Is it Fox Farm? I don't think it's there yet, nor uh, did I think they would expect it to be. Um, because I think that kind of, of uh, upper echelon kind of hazy takes time. But I I mean, that second tier of stuff, and that second tier is very, very hard to get to, too. I think it really does play in that territory. I'm talking about the... And this is very American based, so it's not going to really do, um, you know, your uh, Quebecians all that much. But it has this like pariah level goodness to it. This kind of brick city, this kind of twin elephant level goodness for those people that are local to me. And it just has that, that, that. What's the word I'm looking for? So this is going to be a long review, so buckle in. I like the beer. I think it's fantastic. It's one of the better hazies I've had as of late. Is it Mount Rushmore status? No, but it wants to be there. So I'm going to keep talking if you guys are waiting for the end. Go ahead. Um, so, you know, there's, it's, I totally lost my train of thought what I was going to say there. I like it. I think it's fantastic. I think it's a really well done beer. Um, and I think it's, it's got me pumped for the rest of them. Cause like you said, you know, no idea going to the brewery was kind of hoping it would be good. Um, and that almost ends up being kind of a negative. Cause a lot of times you hope so much it's going to be good. That even if it's not close to good, you feel like weird about it. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be unbiased here. It's kind of hard when you're kind of connected to somebody like that, but very cool, dude. Very, uh, kudos to the brewer. Kudos to you guys for, for, um, providing a space that makes this stuff like that for the brewer. And just really good stuff. So we'll cut to the chase that I just talked about. Is it one of the better ones that I've had as late? Yes. Is it Mount Rushmore status? No, but I think that is not a negative. I mean, there's only so many rooms. There's only four. See that right there? Four, um, four spots on that mountain, and it's very hard to get to. Uh, value to availability? Um, no idea. Let me know, man. I don't. I assume it's brewery only, especially during COVID times. Um, but you, you might be able to ship, or maybe, I don't know. I doubt you could pick this. I don't think you can pick this up at LCBO, because I think it would have to have more on the can in order to do that. But who knows? I mean, it has a barcode on it. So uh, and leave you with, if you like what we like this beer, if you're like really well done hazies. I mean, this beer is a really well done hazy. And this is the one thing I didn't touch on, and I'm kind of sad because I'm bringing it towards the end. A lot of people kind of tune out by now. 
this drinks more like 7.4 than 6.4. And it's pr one of the things that I typically do is I get on my soapbox and I kind of complain about beers not hitting at their weight class, hitting the low, you know, being 8% drinking like 5 or stuff like that. This is 6.5 drinking like 7.5, and, and I can't understate that. So, yeah, beautiful beer, tasty AF, and a really nice foray into the old uh, Favi Baron beer. Yeah, I say it, I sound Italian. I should stop saying that shit. Anyway. There you go. Thank you very much for sending this off, Jacob. Super appreciative. Um, down there, if you guys want to talk about this beer, um, Massive Beers, if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massif. If you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying a little bit of uh, cool Becky and Hayes right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>